hi there so this is not how i wanted this video to be but i have the house to myself for a limited time only and um i have to start making this video i wanted to like you know crochet while i was doing it but then i grabbed with this yarn and it's all tangled so i gotta get the tangle out first um and i've been doing this for like the past 20 minutes um but i'm running out of time so i'm just gonna have to untangle it on camera i suppose um <laughs> In this video, um, I wanted to talk about market prep because my first market of the year is coming up um, this month, 19 more days, and uh, ugh, this black. Um, and I always get like super nervous <laughs> and anxious around market time because I always feel like I never have enough stock. I always feel like like I don't I just don't have enough stuff um, regardless of how much shit I actually have. Um, and so I don't know I just thought I'd make a little another I, I thought I'd make a video um, about you know market tips um, and everything because I'm definitely like a bare minimum type of person um, and I think that it's important when like if you're thinking about getting into markets to start with a bare minimum um, until you kind of get into the groove because um, I just think it's important before you spend a lot of money to know what you actually want to have and what you're gonna actually need um, I wish I could hit this knot out um, and like just start crocheting already. Dude, this is so annoying. Um, I'm honestly so tempted to just cut it, but I'm so close. I feel like I'm close. Um, so yeah, I'll put the camera up now. Uh, just, you know. Um, yeah, let's get started. So I have my notes here uh, because I'm taking this seriously and, you know, I can't do anything without organizing my thoughts. So first things first. Um, so let's um, I've done. So this is going to be my first market of the year. I've done like maybe like five or six markets before in the span of the last like three years yeah three years and so um this is gonna be like my biggest year yet with um five markets um so i've got one this june july august september november and then one in december wait june july august september november yeah i don't have one in december i wasn't there was like an offer for one but i I'm gonna be too focused on making Christmas presents um, and so and so the markets that I've done I'll insert some pictures too throughout um, to kind of let you guys know what I'm talking about because once you see like my setup you will definitely be able to tell that I'm definitely a bare bones type of person um, but because these markets were um, like the last market, I, I didn't do any markets last year, so these are kind of um, all sort of before I kind of did my like little rebrand thing, obviously. Um, and so I do plan on doing things different this time, but um, I'll insert some pictures of some of my previous markets. I've done like art pop ups at local cafes or this one local cafe that I used to work at. Um, it was like an art cafe specifically. Um, so I did some, um, I've done a few uh, pop ups there. I've done um, two expos or three, I don't remember. Um, and then I've done 
like art attack which is it's kind of like art in the park where you just set up a booth like in the park um that was really good um and so i'll insert some photos of that um and so what i'm going to be talking about pretty much in this video is just like the bare bones setup and what i'm going to be doing differently this year um because while still sticking to the like the bare bones um thing because i'm not made of money and like i've been looking these past couple of like weeks for display things to add and like god damn everything's so expensive like it's crazy um and so i think that if this is your first time doing a market I think that we tend to overthink it because really like all you need for a market is the bare bones stuff that we're going to go through I'm I need to stop saying bare bones um, and I think that once you just throw yourself in you'll get the experience and then you know what you need because everybody's different I don't know what you're selling if you're selling because there's so many different types of um, you know wait there's so many different avenues that you can go through um, and so I think that to start, we will start with how to start selling your art at the market. Um, and I think that one of the most important things, like I just said, is just doing it. Um, so step one, how do you find a market? Um, I kind of suck at this answer because I, I'm i constantly like wondering where I can find markets and I mean I'm in five markets this year um, but they're all actually like through the same per like the same organizer so it was kind of easy uh, but where to find markets um, I think that the best way if you have like if you've never done one before if you're antisocial you don't know anybody you you know don't talk to people like you don't really want to be you know just asking random people stuff i think the best bet is facebook um or instagram if you know of any local like going to local art shows or um like going to your local art shows if you know of any that are coming up, which I guess if you knew of any would coming up, you would just sign up for those. But um, like going to art stores, um, like if you have anything local um, and asking the people in the art stores. But for online, the, I've had the best look with Facebook and Instagram. Um, Facebook, I'm in a few like groups, like I typed in like Nova, craft shows, art shows, art markets, um, and I have a few groups, but honestly, like, they're kind of, I feel like a lot of them are, like, scammy, and they're not, at, like, they're trying to get the, like, they make, like, a little fake flyer for, like, the fees and stuff, the, to sign up for the market, and then you don't hear back from, I don't know, that's just, like, the vibe that I get, because there's always, like, a, somebody that's not the person that made the original post, on the bottom like talking about email me for signing up or whatever and so um i think that it is a little bit um oh my god this is really bothering me i just want to crochet dude um so facebook could be an option um instagram i think is a really good option if you follow or know of any local artists near you um, then you can like go and see what they've been doing. One thing that I do sometimes is like, I'll go to, I have, um, some like local artists that I know from working at the cafe. And so if I really need to like find a market, um, like I could ask them. Um, I also can go to like their Instagram page where they're tagged and like see what events they've been tagged in or whatever if they're doing that for their business page their art um their art page and everything and that's a good way to um find some new um market leads um but other than that i think that another good option is going to your local shops and asking 
if you can do a pop-up in front of their shop those are always really fun um and it kind of gives you the spotlight so it may not be like the best option for your first time but at least then it's kind of under your control instead of under somebody else's rules you know because if you go to a market like and you end up you forgot your cash or something you can't just I mean I guess you can but like you know it's not gonna be the best look for the organize to the organizer if you just pack up your stuff and leave midway through whereas if you're doing a pop-up in front of a shop then you can kind of just be like hey I forgot this so I'm just gonna like go or go and get this and then I'll set back up or maybe we can do this another day it's a, you just have a little bit more flexibility because you're the only person that has to you know that's dealing um with the shop owner or organizer um whew, um the next thing that so that's kind of it for that I have for like finding markets because like I said I'm not that good at it yet <laughs> Um, and hopefully next year, like hopefully after the markets that I do this year, I can build my following, make more local art friends, um, and then also, you know, learn more about the local art scene. Um, and so the next thing that I think is very important to starting to do markets is getting the stock and some might say that you might want to have stock before you actually go and sign up for markets um you know and like yes uh because that would completely eliminate the stress that um i feel at least before every single market even though i do have stock but it's just i always because i kind of have the preference for like and over uh like a maximalist appeal like aesthetic um I feel like I'm pretty minimalist in my um like in my necessities but when it comes to the products and the things I'm making I want it to have a maximalist feel because I want to have like baskets of my stuff that people can just rummage through like when I was um doing when I was mostly selling hand embroidered patches I always dreamed of just having like a big like basket of patches that people could just go through and I could not create at that <laughs> speed to make that happen oh my god I'm just gonna cut this dude this is insane so some people might say you should have stock before I personally think that it's all about what you are selling and I think it's about your confidence because some people show up to the markets, you know, like, and they have like, maybe like 10 things, but they're like really specialty or something, you know? And I think that that's fine. I think that anything's fine. If you want to do a market, then do it. If you don't have that much stuff, you could still do it. You're just, you know, not going to sell as much stuff because you don't have that much stuff, but you might sell out, which would be a nice accomplished feeling, um, maybe. Sometimes it sucks if you have markets back to back because then it's like, okay, great, now I'm starting from scratch again, which um, has happened to me because it's such a bittersweet feeling because it's like, it's really awesome, you know, selling out and like, you know, having people want all of your things that badly. Um, but then also it's like, okay, now I've got my work cut out for me for the next market that's in two weeks. Um, and so I think that getting your stock, I think you should have at least have like some things or at least like experience to, of what you're trying to sell before um, you find a market. Um, and thinking about exactly what you want to sell and how many you want of each. I personally think that 25 items total is good. I think that's a good starting point because you don't you won't get overwhelmed with products. And if you price your stuff like me, I price my stuff. I mean, I personally wouldn't say it's high because I've seen other people post like similar products to mine on Instagram or on um, Etsy and like of similar quality and um, like theme for 
double what I price, but I've also seen some people price way lower than I have, and I, I price, which this is kind of going into the next thing, but I price um, my stuff with, like, just, I just kind of feel it out. I don't have a formula, I don't do, I feel, I feel what the price is by the factors it took to make it. Oh my god. I don't want to be untangling yarn this whole fucking video, dude. But I suppose this is the task that I picked. I think I'm just gonna cut it because I honestly, I don't have the fucking time. I do not have time for this. And it's like, it's that, it's that bamboo rayon, so it's getting all stringy and stuff because I'm trying to fucking untangle this tiny knot. start crocheting, dude. Um, so, I'm gonna give it, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a little bit more, and if it's still not cooperating with me soon, we're, we're done so. Um, but, anyway, um, it, I think you also have to consider if your stuff is handmade. If you're like selling things that aren't handmade, then you know it's a little bit easier to build up stock depending on you know where you're sourcing your stuff from. Um, but I know it takes me forever to hand make stuff, and I hand make everything. I even hand make my business cards, um, and so that kind of sucks. <laughs> but I haven't like settled on a design of a business card that I want to like recreate um and so if you're thinking another good point about stock is if you're thinking of doing multiple markets um like i am this uh year like june july august september october oh wait no i don't have one in october but if you're thinking of doing multiple uh, markets then it's good to think about um making overstock so like making what you want to have for the market and then making extra that you could bring with you or you could leave at home so that in case you sell out at the market you'll still have the overstock at home for the next one that may might <laughs> that may fall within like the next two weeks so that puts like a lip that that just gives you a little bit of more wiggle room instead of having to completely start from scratch and that's one thing that i kind of do i um i i make things and then i set like every one or two item aside for my website and then the rest of it is just market stuff um this that the rest of it because i don't like taking everything um because if something sells in at a market then i have to update my website and if i don't update it immediately then of course that's when somebody's gonna try to buy it and then i can't you know ship it be okay i'm cutting it i can't ship it because it's been um because it's been purchased you know and so okay yeah this whole little midsection is just gonna go because what the fuck so can i actually start my project now that would be pretty sweet okay so i'm gonna leave this i'm gonna roll this up later um and then this i'm just gonna okay can i crochet now i'm uh doing i'm trying to do this little pattern that i have made um yeah i got this like okay so I got this um, this yarn from Michaels and it's really cute I love tweed it's really cute um, and fuzzy and I thought that it would make a cute bow so I'm gonna make this I'm gonna start out with a, um, a single crochet foundation um, and yeah okay so back to what I was saying um so yeah 
handmade you're always gonna want to like a lot that extra time because you know handmade stuff takes a while um as for as for pricing i think that pricing is a hundred percent up to the artist obviously um i don't think i don't like when people tell other people what they should be pricing their stuff as because if, as long as you're happy then who gives a fuck um i personally like i said like my um my pricing is very uh loose i i kind of go on like it's so hard to explain if i feel if i think that i would feel disappointed i pretty much ask myself like okay if you if i made this and then like it only like and sold it for five dollars would i feel like satisfied or happy or would i feel sad because this thing that i created is gone and i only have five dollars to show for it which will be gone to just buy a bag of fucking chips or something like you know so i always ask myself like if i'll feel disappointed or will I feel satisfied when this sells? And then I kind of just like up the number until I'm like, yeah, I think I would feel satisfied with that because it's my creation. It's, you know, it's what I'm, shit, I didn't count. I didn't count how many I should be making. I just started, um, let me count really quick. Mm -mm -mm. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty two, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, fifty. Okay, so we'll do fifty. So six on each side. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, whenever I am pricing my um, stuff, like I do try to take into account the, uh, the price of the materials. Um, because that's a given. Like I feel like, shit, now I have to count the chain. Ugh, and it's black. Um, should I pause it or just, should I just count? Um, let me just count this really quick. <laughs> Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, god damn it. Ugh. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. Six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Little tapestry. Yeah, I kind of wanted it to be bigger than that, but it'll do. It'll do. Um. Okay. So yeah, when I'm pricing my stuff, I kind of like I don't use the formula because I suck at numbers and I don't like them. So I kind of just like keep in mind what the price of the ball of yarn is that I use and if like like say I paid five dollars for this because it was on sale for it was 40 percent off um then the product that I'm making is just gonna be at least five dollars at least like it's got to be enough for me to buy another ball uh, another skein of yarn so um that's how I do like at least like minimum stuff like 
I know the minimum that I need to charge. And then, like I said, I kind of just go up from there. Like, I made this with a, a ball of yarn that cost $8. So this is going to be at least $8 in my shop. Um, and then I also try to uh, account for, oh my god, this fucking black yarn. I cannot see anything. Um, I also try to account for um, worst fucking YouTube video in history, dude. I swear. I also try to account for like how enjoyable it was to make the project because if I didn't enjoy it, then it's going to be more. If I enjoyed it, then I'm not going to charge cr a crazy amount because it's what I do to relax. It's a hobby. Um, it's something that I enjoy. So if if I enjoyed making it and it's easy and I can easily make more of it because I like to, then I'll charge a cheaper price. Um, but if it's something that's a little, that takes a little bit more brain power or concentration or time where I need to be completely by myself, um, or like, for example, I have another tapestry that I'm working on right now. Maybe I'll insert a video um of it but it's a tv tapestry and it's i love tapestry i just have to figure out like a system with all the colors because i have to be alone to do it because i can't keep getting interrupted by the kids or by you know tyler my partner like every few minutes um to get it done because it's just it's just not doable and so I, I, I like to factor in if it was it less than enjoyable, then it's going to be a little bit more pricey than if it's something that takes me a while, but I thoroughly enjoyed the whole process or even if it's something quick, but I really like making them. So I'll, I'll put it at a cheaper price. Um, I feel like I've talked about that for a really long time because I cannot concentrate and talk at the same time, I guess. Um, so moving on. The next thing is setting up. So, or the setup. So like we've already established in this video, uh, I'm a bare bones type of gal, like a minimalist, if you will. Um, like just a like if you if you saw me at, at like a booth like it would fit in with like you know like a punk just like a punk get together like a punk shop um like at somebody's house like a house um art art party or something because i like part of my business brand is kind of just like being rough around the edges it's homemade i'm doing my best it's made with love, um, but it might be rough. It might be a little rough. Um, it's the quality is gonna be good because I try not to. I don't sell anything that's not like you know quality. It's not gonna, you know, nothing that I that I sell is gonna you know be useless within a couple of days or anything or even you know years. And if it is, you know, people can feel free to come message me. I'm a fucking person, you know, like we can talk about it so my suggestions i say that to say that my suggestions are like you know on the rougher side if you want a more polished business like then you know go for it that's good for you um but it's not really my brand like i'm a rougher on the edges type of person so for my setup you know i use like, I use, like, scrap fabric as, like, my table coverings, um, and I, because I have a lot, um, and, you know, I have the pictures, um, that you guys can see some from some of my previous markets, um, but anyway, so the necess the bare necessities that you'll need for a market, and some of these 
will not apply, just depending on what kind of markets you go to. Um, like tables, chairs, sometimes um, the market organizers, depending, will, um, will provide that stuff. Like the markets that I'm doing this, um, this summer, all of that stuff will be provided because I'm doing, I'm going to be inside. Um, for the particular markets that I entered, um, if I were to request to be outside, it would be, it would fall on me to bring my own table and chairs. Um, and I do have a table, I don't really have any chairs, but I have like a little, little pop-up camping stool or something. Um, but I do have my own table, um, that I've used, um, I think I got it off like Facebook Marketplace. Um, but some of the, the it, it'll usually say in the application fee for the market, like whether or not the table or chairs are provided or not. Um, so tables, sometimes provided chairs, sometimes provided. Um, you'll need like a brand sign. I think that this is a necessity because I feel like unless you're, you know, just trying to offload um, like things that you've thrifted or something, um, I think that it's a, if you're if you're a handmade business, I think that it's important to have a brand sign because I mean if you're not it, I, I just feel like it adds to I feel like homemade goods already have like a homey you know feeling to them and I think that it adds more of a homey feeling when there's kind of just an association to the products that you're selling like a brand um, so I think that a brand sign would be a necessity um, obviously your products um, and then something to display your products on um, for me I have a lot of um, like glass dishes and like um, I don't know how to describe them like just I have um, like so what I did was I went to the um, like the thrift store Goodwill and you know they always have I don't like it's like like kind of like a goblet I don't know it's like a vase like a vase um, but there's out I'll, I'll put a picture or a video um, but there's a lot of and you know the pictures of my previous dance um, you can always find a good like bowl type things um, like that to put stuff in like crystal or you know in cool funky colors or you know vintagey um, aesthetic you can always find stuff like that at Goodwill and I think that um, thrifting I mean you know it's getting more expensive now but I think that it's always I think it's a good go-to for um, for getting like simple displays like if you want bowls or um, jewelry boxes or um, things like that just simple like things to display your products in um, the next thing you'll need of course is a money system I can't tell if it's a fuzzy or a gnat um, the next thing that you'll need is like some sort of money system so obviously you should have cash take it out like at least like a day before the market because I always forget to br to bring money. I always forget to take money and then it's like I'm on the, my way to the market and I'm like shit I forgot to bring money or I fucking already got there and I forgot to bring money and then I have to go back out um to leave to get to get cash for change. So definitely do not forget your cash for change. Um get like, you know, like I have the square system um I have an old iPhone that I use or that I plan to use. Um, this is this will be my first new market with like my new phone, which doesn't have um, the headphone jack. And my old Square Reader is like for my iPhone anyway. Um, for so I'll be using another old iPhone that I have to use the Square Reader. But also, if you download Square on your phone, you can do tap to pay. Um, which most cards do now, I think, anyway. So, something to take money. Um, POS, cash, a cash box, a bag, 
Cash App, Ven Venmo, Zelle, uh, whatever. Um, another thing is bags um, to put your products in when people buy them. Um, I use paper bags. Um, I'm going to sew up some reusable totes um, if I have the time. I think I will. I'm going to sew up some reusable totes. Um, and then that way I can offer an upcharge in case somebody happens to buy like a crazy amount or they just want to buy a tote. I'm going to upcharge like maybe a dollar or three dollars maybe. It depends on how big I make them, I think. Um, so yeah, I plan to um, offer an upcharge for like re uh, reusable cloth totes that I will make if um, people are interested in that. So that's just another way to make a little bit extra money um, and also, you know, being sustainable. Um, on QR codes or business cards, um, I hand make my business cards. So um, that's one thing that I kind of do at the markets. Like I just, like really the past few markets that I've been at, I haven't had a sufficient amount. So I've just been kind of like, when I get there, I just make more as I'm sitting there waiting. Um, and then if, if you're not like a business card person or it's too late to order them or you're just going low budget as possible, um, and I mean, you could make them like I do, just cut some paper and then, well, you know, um, you could do QR code. Um, you could print out your QR code that has like the links to everything in it. Um, to every all of your social media your website um everything like that um uh definitely a notebook that's um the last thing that's on my bare necessities list is a notebook so that you can track your inventory um it's smart to write everything down that you're bringing beforehand write down what it's worth um like what your cost, what your price is for it. And then you can also write like, you know, um, what you, or like, I think, so what I've done in the past is I haven't wrote down exactly what I bring. I just kind of write down what sells. Um, and so but it would I, I could see how it would be smart to write down everything that you're bringing and then also and then you can just check it off that it's sold, I suppose. Um, but either way, I think that it's important to bring some sort of notebook where you can keep track of what you are selling so that you can write, write down every sell or write down any notes that you might think of during the market like if somebody has a special request for something or if somebody particularly said like oh man i wish that you had this in black i would totally buy it but you only have it in green so now next time you can maybe you know make one in green and get that sell um so um some other optional things that i think um, are good to have for setting up your table is some decor, like just, you know, some, uh, some things to make your booth look aesthetic or, you know, just like more welcoming, more to your personality, you know, things that just bring you, your brand, your vision to the market. And I feel like I accomplished this through kind of like, I don't really have like decor. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about getting some, but um, I think that I accomplished this by, like I said, like I use my scrap fabrics for a table, for a tablecloth, which adds like, you know, a little bit of like patchwork personality there. Um, and then like the thrifted, things that I use on my table. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I have cigar boxes that I use to like prop things up. Um, and I would like to get one of those, um, either those collapsible grid crates or a pegboard to put behind or in front of my booth because this year I'll be selling like tapestries and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna, I, I still need to find a way to hang those, 
whoops, sorry, I forgot the mic is on this side, so sorry. Um, but yeah, so decor um, to make your table, you know, a little bit more mm, uh, tablecloths. Um, you could, I like to have like little extras or freebies. So if somebody buys like something that's like really pricey, I like to throw in something small as a freebie um, or like extras. Like I have the bracelets, like the little candy bracelets that just say status purgatory, the alphabet bracelets. Um, beads they're beads the bead bracelets um that i sell for a dollar if somebody buys you know something that like above a certain price or i'm feeling them then i might throw a bracelet in or if i think that you know they might like it um or maybe like a keychain or something i like to have freebies i used to have like stickers and stuff but and like i do have some pins left i need to make more but it's very it's a little time consuming um so freebies and extras like small stuff that is easy to make that you can give away to people that are buying i mean obviously it's not necess a, necess a necessity um but it's something that i like to do so i thought i'd throw it in there um care instructions for your products if you have um like you know, handmade items that need special care. I provide um, little care, uh, little care cards for my frogs. That um, for my wired frogs, my posable frogs, um, because you know, if I price them pretty, I mean, I feel like they're priced pretty fair. Like they're fifty right now, I think. So, you know, if you're spending fifty dollars on this thing I mean don't you want to take care of it so I include care cards for stuff like that um for my patches I have care cards so that if somebody buys a patch and puts it on a garment they'll know how to make it best last the longest um if you're gonna be outside vending you're probably you might may or may not need a tent um I've never had one so I don't really have experience with this um, like, you know, like, not like a camping tent, obviously, um, but like, you know, the, the tents that go over your table and all of that, um, that is an option, and like I said before, a notebook, um, or something, oh wait, this is a different notebook, so you want to have a notebook for you, but it's also a good idea to have a notebook, or just like, you know, something fancy for your customers or people interested that come to look at your shop to write their email in for a mailing address. So if somebody's interested, um, they can write their name down for the mailing address and then that way you're able to communicate and um, let them know like if you when, when you're gonna get a website or when there's a shop update or when your next market is and when they can come see you. So something like that is really good to have. Um, a lot of people offer like discounts for signing up for the mailing list. I think that I might try to do that this year. Um, I'm not sure. We'll see. I was thinking of doing like $5 off um, if you sign up for the mailing list or like uh, $5 off if you if you like follow me on social media or something like that. Um, but I, the only reason I'm like hesitating about it is because I don't know how busy it will be and I don't know how much it will mess with the flow of people visiting my tent or my booth um, or you know, like at checkout, if they're like, yeah, I want to buy this. Um, um, did you say that I could get $5 off? And then I'm like, yeah, you just have to follow me on social media. And then they have to get their phone out and then go on social media and then follow me and then show me. And then I'll give them the $5 off. And then like, you know, there could be like other people waiting by that time. I don't know. So I'm going to figure it out. But just some ideas that I saw that I might try. And I'll let you know if it works or not. Um... So, um, some other display options, um, which I kind of already touched on, is like scrap fabric for a more like rough around the edges look. Um, you could use a sheet if you want to have a tablecloth. Sometimes I think that tablecloths are like an, an, um, a requirement. 
um, but I'm not sure. Um, I've always just used scrap fabric, so scrap fabric, sheets, um, you could use a blanket, like a quilt or something, um, cigar boxes for propping, like, you know, things up, and all of my cigar boxes fit in my suitcase, so that's a plus. Um, and then like jewelry boxes, I have a jewelry box, I'm not sure if I'll be using it at um, these markets because I like the hooks that it has in it. It's like an old fashioned jewelry box. And so I was thinking of displaying my keychains um, on it, but I haven't decided yet. Um, and which leads me to my next one. It's always good to practice your display or like draw it out, you know, try to like mock it up so that once you get to the market, you're not completely, you know, lost um, and not like reconfiguring things every you know five minutes because you know you just want it to look right and it's not turning out right so it's always good to have like a general idea of what you want your space to look like um keeping inventory of what you have and what sells i already said that and make sure that you know the total um, of what you are bringing like what is everything worth what are you charging for everything and what does everything add up to because that's really important um, in case anything happens but it's also important because if you're going to the market with a specific goal in mind then you need to bring enough you know enough product to make sure that that goal is attainable. If your goal is to make $500, but you only bring $200 worth of merchandise, you see how that's not adding up? So it's really important to make sure to price your items before, you know, packing everything up and then making sure that you're um, keeping track of the total um, amount of product that you have for your own goals and in case anything happens um and like you know you need an insurance payout or something so the next thing is like having like a price list um stickers labels offers how are you going to price your stuff do you want everybody to ask you what the price of something is? Do you just know off the top of your brunt? Like, are you making it up as you go? Are you accepting offers? Um, are your prices strict? Like, you know, um, it's important to have your prices figured out. Um, I like to go with like the little, um, the little chalkboard stands and I kind of like to organize my stuff like cheapest to most expensive so I'll have like clearance bin like my low budget stuff my medium stuff and then my high price stuff um, I like to have it because I feel like it kind of flows and it also is a clear separation between you know what people can afford if they know that they can only afford you know if they know that they're not trying to spend like $50 then, you know, I have a section for people that are not trying to spend $50. Um, and then I'll have, you know, like this, this general area is, um, you know, 10 to $15. This general area is 20 to 30. And then this general area is $50 and up. That's kind of how I like to do it. Um, and last but not least for, this isn't really to do with setup, but it's a good kind of like segue into the next section, I guess. I hope this video is not gonna be too long, but um, promote the event <laughs> because you're signing up for the event, somebody's organizing it, um, there's gonna be a lot of other artists, you know, there, hopefully, maybe. Um, and I feel like it's part of trying to branch out into markets is you gotta promote the event. You have to post about it. You have to share it, talk about it because uh, I just think that it doesn't make sense when people sign up for a market and then 
it like doesn't really go well for them, but they didn't do anything to try to promote it, or they didn't post about it, or just, you know, you, it's. I feel like we gotta do our part. Yes, the organizer is in charge of the event, and obviously they're probably promoting, I mean, hopefully, you know, promoting and blah blah blah, but, I mean, as an artist that's going to be attending the event, I feel like it falls, like, we should also be promoting it. Um, so promote the event, share it on your social media, ask people to come out and see you and support you, um, and that could be, you know, a, that could be a guaranteed sale for you if somebody that sees your art or likes your art or likes you and wants to support you sees that you're going to be, you know, at this place on this day selling stuff, then, you know, that's kind of a guaranteed sale. So I feel like you, there's nothing, like, there's no negative impact of promoting the event yourself um because I just feel like it gives more exposure so anyway we got all that stuff out of the way it's time for the big day what do you do so the big day is here already have your stuff packed up already have your stuff packed up the night before because the day of it's so hectic for me at least and I'm almost always late or just like right on time which, I mean, in the past, as you can see by my, uh, those pictures, like, I haven't had, like, that much stuff to, um, to, uh, kind of, like, you know, put out, but it always helps. And my stuff kind of stays packed in my suitcase, but right now, there's so much stuff that's out of them, um, that I haven't even I need to like I'm gonna go through my suitcase today and kind of go through um some of the stuff that I need to take out or you know change um and go through you know just go through my inventory of what I'm gonna have because I have a lot of older things that I'm trying to get rid of still too so I'm gonna debate on whether it should be clearance or just low ticket um like we've already mentioned, bring your, uh, get your cash. You should have already pulled that out a few days ago. You gotta bring your cash. Eat breakfast. And if you don't like breakfast, bring some snacks because there might be food there. Um, but you know, we're going to make money. Um, we're going, we're trying to make money, not spend it. And that's one of my problems is every time, almost, well, I remember one market, there was like, Every time I made a sale, I went and bought something. Like, I went and bought something from somebody else's booth. Like, I could not be stopped. It was my birthday. Um, there was a piercer at one of the, um, like, that they had a booth. I got my nose pierced. I spent, like, an insane amount of money on a white diamond, like, nose ring or whatever. Or white gold or something. Like, every time I made a sale, I went and spent it somewhere else. So... And, like, it, it, I didn't even buy any food. I was just buying stuff. So, you know, buy stuff if you want. But um, just, you know, you know, <laughs> keep track of what you, like, keep track of it at least so that you can know what you made. Um, even though um, that's not even what I was trying to talk about. Eat breakfast, pack snacks so that you don't have to get, like, really expensive food um, unless you want to. Um, I already said this kind of create a list of everything you may need. Oh, like at least a week in advance because that way you'll have time to kind of, you know, realize that you're forgetting something if you are. So I think another good thing that I kind of like to do that kind of works, um, is run through like a scenario. Like if you've got like a partner or a friend or a sibling or somebody around you, Ask them to simulate like a sale with you so that you can go through the actions in your head in your head and figure out everything that you need. So like if you don't think if you if you forgot about the bags, you know, like 
go through and then make a sale and you're not just going to hand them the item you're going to put it in a bag and then get them the bag which that's something that it could be easily overlooked so don't forget your bags dude don't forget your bags um bring a friend to help it's helpful um because depending on how much stuff you have uh it can get like there's different factors that can make it a little bit more difficult to um kind of you know set up like where the parking is um or if there's stairs or how many how many bags you have i try to minimize my stuff so that i can carry everything that i need in two trips maximum like i'm not making more than two trips um and so if you have a friend because if you think of like if you're by yourself I mean, the two trips maximum is my rule in general, but if you think about it, if you're by yourself and you're taking your stuff, like, over to the booth and then your car is a while away or something, you know, then you're leaving your stuff unattended for a while, and I don't like that. So, you're a friend, and plus, like, you're gonna be there for a few hours, and unless you're social and just can talk to anybody, you know, you might get bored, or it's just, like, you know, it's just nice to, you know have somebody there so that you can go look around or use the bathroom or, you know, get food or literally anything. Just bring a friend. It'll, it'll be more, more fun. Um, say hi to your neighbors. Even if you're shy, like me, I can turn it on though. I can, I can turn on the social skills. Um, I mean, they're still pretty mediocre, but I can turn it on. Um, say hi to your neighbors. Um, I remember at one market, I think it was art, the art attack or art in the park or something like that. And like my, one of the people that the, uh, one of the vendors to my like, right, she came over and like bought me this little like charm and I still have it. It's on, it's on my knee high boots. It's on my knee high Doc Martens. Um, she bought me like this little charm and it was so cute and excuse me sorry um it's just like she bought a charm just because we were neighbors and she gave one to like the like the people that were you know around her um and I remember that and I remember like you know feeling very welcome and it just it it just you know it's sweet so if you do have any like little freebies or extras like we were talking about earlier, give them to your neighbors, you know, let them know like little stickers and then that could help with your branding too. Um, and obviously you don't have to give them anything, but just, you know, just saying hi and letting them know that, you know, you're a friendly person. If you're a friendly person, um, you know, it could open up some more doors for you like um what we were talking about earlier with finding markets then that's you know more local artists that you have to follow and get more um information or advice or details on other markets that might be coming up um one more thing is i think that it is a really good idea to stay until the end of the market a lot of people like leave or start packing up like you know 45 minutes or in the last hour or so you know and I get it to like avoid the traffic of everybody leaving at the same time and all of that but if you stay until the end first of all you already paid for it you already paid for the event might as well stay the whole time and get your money's worth because the other people that are there they, they now have new money to spend. They've got new money. Like me. <laughs> I will always buy from other vendors. So once I have money in my pocket, like it's over, dude. So stay until the end so that you can get some more potential sales from the other vendors who may not have been able to leave their, um, their booth. Um, and then I guess, you know, like we were saying earlier, just be yourself. Like, I'm myself. So I know my stuff's not perfect. I know that it's rough around the edges. 
I know that I could present more polished, but that's not who I am. So I don't do that. And I think that authenticity has a lot to do with people being attracted to your shop or your brand or just you as a person in general. So just be authentic and have fun. I mean, it's if you're not having fun, then I think you should just leave because why would you do something that you don't want to do? That's not fun for you. Um, and I think that markets, yes, they're stressful, but it's also really fun. Um, hmm. I don't know if I like this gauge. Uh, oh, this is a two. This is a two seven five. I thought it was the two twenty five. Oh, should I switch? It's fine. I'll just stick with it. Um, but yeah. I mean, I guess that's the video. It's way longer than I thought it was going to be. So I hope that this, I hope that these tips help somebody. And if they don't, then I'm sorry. I'll make a better video. Um, but I'm, I do plan on making um, a video about this um, upcoming market that I have. Um, and letting you all know how that went. Because this is like, it's, I feel like I'm jumping back into the game. It's been so long since I've, uh, since I've done a market so I'll let you guys know how it goes and also I'm, I have a lot of market prep videos coming up because um, I have been making non-stop um, I don't think I need that anymore um, so yeah I have lots of videos about market prep coming up so stay tuned if you would like follow if you would like um, subscribe if you would like please comment like and tell me you know your market experiences and also if you have any tips on you know finding other markets because I know that I kind of suck at that area but yeah just uh you know comment literally anything because like I want to know that somebody's there so um yes that's my video and I hope that you liked it and the next video will probably be um, like how I do my bracelets, which is, you know, just really simple. Um, but it's been sitting on my computer forever because there's videos that I need to transfer from my phone. But I have an Android phone and a Mac computer and it doesn't make it easy on me. So yeah, that'll probably be up in a few days. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I want to get up. So uh, uh, bamboo, it just splits so easily all right thank you guys for spending this time with me i hope you have a good rest of your day bye